Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Danny from C4C Apologetics. Welcome back. Remember, the whole purpose of C4C Apologetics is to help the Christian think through their Christian faith. Or if you're not a Christian, or if you're not a believer in the true God of Scripture, the true God who created heaven and earth, then it's our goal here, and it's our hope and our prayer and a desire for you to think about the rationality, the reasonableness, the evidence for the Christian faith. You see, today's video, and we're continuing on this New Age Movement series, today's video we're specifically going to be talking about the Age of Aquarius. What is the Age of Aquarius within the New Age Movement thought? What is an age, if you will? What is the Age of Pisces? Is there any biblical symbolism about the Age of Aquarius within Scripture that we can see? We're going to talk about all that and more. We've also looked at in the previous videos of this series a broad overview of what is the New Age movement, the history. We looked at esoteric movement. We talked about the Theosophical Society. We talked about Helena Blavatsky and her influence in bringing this thought into the Western world. The last video, we talked about commonly held beliefs within the New Age movement. While there is a quite a diverse opinions as far as what the doctrines are within this large movement, there are quite a few that are commonly held within the advocates in the New Age movement. So like I said, today we're specifically talking about the Age of Aquarius. First though, if you haven't subscribed to the C4C Apologetics channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Click the little bell on there as well so you can get notified of the episodes and the videos that drop. Don't forget we have podcasts over there on CastBox, Podbean, Apple, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, and a couple other places as well. Go ahead, if you like this video, if you like the podcast, go ahead and click the like button, leave a comment. I do engage on the comments. Even if you don't like it, let me know why and we can talk about it. As I discussed at the end of a last video that I did, there's a song you're probably familiar with, an oldie song, that has quite a lot to do with astrology and actually the age of Aquarius. You see, if you scour your oldies library and you look through your vinyl records from the 60s and the 70s, you're probably going to come across the song by Fifth Dimension titled The Age of Aquarius. You see, if you simply read the lyrics of that song, you'll get an understanding of what is meant by the term Age of Aquarius. I was asked to sing the lyrics, so I'm going to go ahead and put this disclaimer out there. I cannot sing, but I'm going to do it anyways because I'm a funny guy. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> Told you I couldn't sing. So this is the first stanza of the song. But then we get to the second stanza right here. Harmony and understanding, sympathy and trust abounding, no more falsehoods or derisions, golden living dreams of visions, mystic crystal revelation, and the mind's true liberation. This is the dawn of the age of Aquarius. See, I am not on the praise team because I can't sing. I got kicked off before, I'm not going back, and it's quite okay. However, comma. The lyrics to this particular song, this very well-known popular song that you probably rocked back in the day, and I rocked back in the day as well, it actually says a lot about what we're talking about today. That's why it's important to understand the song lyrics and the meanings behind songs that we sing. Because what we end up doing whether Christian or not, is we end up promoting songs and ideologies and views of songs that we actually have no idea what being said. When we actually read the lyrics of the songs that we're jamming out to, we realize it's completely contrary to God and God's word. But before we get into what this particular age is, let's learn a little bit about what astrology is. Astrology is different from astronomy. Astronomy is a realm of science that deals with studying celestial objects, the universe, if you will. It studies nebula. It studies stars. It studies planets. It learns about it. Astrology is different because astrology seeks to study these same objects for insight into how to live life. You see, according to tarot.com, 
astrology is an ancient art that extends way beyond your personal horoscopes. The movement and positions of celestial bodies can have a profound impact on your love life, on your work life, and everything in between. Understanding the patterns of the universe gives you the insight you need to navigate life. You see, astrology is all about looking at God's creation and determining from God's creation what choices to make, who you should marry, who you should date, what financial investments you should make. And it's all based upon studying the stars and the planets and a slew of other things. You see, within astrology, we're most familiar with horoscopes. You see, horoscopes are the common method of, you know, you get the little scrolls and, you know, dollar store, whatever the case is, and people think it's just fun. It's a little joke. You know, we read it and we think we're supposed to make particular choices like this one. You struggle to identify casual relationships in life, leaving you susceptible to dubious explanatory frameworks offered by astrologers like me. <laughs> so we're most familiar with these horoscopes. Basically, the horoscopes are based upon zodiac symbols. And zodiac symbols are assigned based upon one's birthday. And from there, it supposedly identifies a personality trait of the individual. The zodiac sign is determined based upon the constellation of the sun during one's birth. That's how, if you're wondering how you're a Pisces or you're a Leo or like I'm a Cancer, I was, my daughter was jokingly telling me the other day, she was like, Dad, you're a Cancer. I was like, gee, thanks. I love you too. But uh, that's how they get these astrological signs, zodiac signs, based upon where the sun is in the constellation when uh, you were born. But as far as astrology is concerned, astrology teaches that the position of the sun and the moon and the planets within the zodiac chart influence our emotions, luck, relationships, motivation, and much more as you can tell by these planets. Much more could be said about astrology, but we need to realize that it dates back thousands of years. We read about astrologers during the birth of Christ as well as during the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century BC, and even farther back than that. So, with a basic understanding of astrology, namely the studying of celestial objects to determine how to make choices within one's life, we're going to turn to the meat of this video, the actual age of Aquarius. As I said earlier, the age of Aquarius was most famous in the music realm by Fifth Dimension in 1969. And if you recall from the previous video about the history of the New Age movement, you'll remember the influence that the hippie counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s under the use of psychedelic drugs, which led to the Harmonic Convergence Conference in 1987. This is a clear example of the power and influence of music in not only personal lives, but the influence of music within culture and society itself. So, what is an age within astrology? What is an age? What do we mean by an age of Pisces, an age of Aquarius? Well, according to We Mystic, the ages are astronomical and astrological concepts that divide the time and its characteristics according to the movement of Earth in the spring equinox. The celestial pole, which is the imaginary extension of the Earth's pole, perform a circular movement from east to west that takes 25,794 years until it returns to its starting point. This number is not a consensus among scholars. Some believe it lasts about 26,000 years accurate. Dividing any of these numbers by the 12 zodiacal signs, we have about 2,000 years in each age. Each sign is represented by a constellation, and as the celestial pole moves, there is a displacement in relation to the constellation that marks the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere. In other words, an age begins when the sun rises during the spring equinox of a certain constellation or zodiac sign. And with each age, it brings changes and in influence upon Earth in the direction that mankind actually evolves. That where these things happen, in what age a particular civilization is in, it guides humanity, apparently. According to astrologers, the universe is actually currently in the age of Pisces. And it's actually taught that a distinct personality is attributed to each age. 
This aligns with a pantheistic view that the universe and everything within the universe is God and vibrates together with oneness. So what is the age of Pisces? According to this view, it's the age of the universe we're currently in and have been in for 2,000 years. And since each age is apparently representative of a personality or a trait, Pisces is supposedly centered around faith, belief, sacrifice, and religion. And because an age lasts about 2,000 years, there is belief that the next age is going to be ushered in. And the next age, according to the Zodiac calendar, is the age of Aquarius. While some astrologers believe that Aquarius has already came in, others believe it's about two to 700 years away. However, they share the same view that when one age replaces another, there is a period of transition when the two ages overlap. And then there is a struggle between the previous age and its personality and the coming personality of the new age of the constellations. It's with this view astrologers point out that we are in this transitional phase, the leaving of the age of Pisces and the ushering in of the age of Aquarius. You see, these astrologers argue this because after the Enlightenment period and postmodern thought rose, science and religion have been at odds warring against each other for a century or two. We see this as we reflect back on the New Age history video with the rise again of the Theosophical Society and Esoteric Philosophies. Many New Agers teach that Jesus Christ was simply an avatar that began the process of purifying sins during the age of Pisces so that there was an ability to make a way for the age of Aquarius some 2,000 years ago. This shouldn't surprise anybody because as we looked at, the New Age movement teaches Eastern views of Jesus, namely that he was either a man, a prophet, or the incarnation of Vishnu, the Hindu god, to restore Dharma into the world. Astrology Zone argues that Christianity actually has many Pisces symbolism with its, when it's tradition. You see, they argue that early Christians used a symbol of the fish, which is a symbol of Pisces, as a secret symbol of their faith. They argue that the emphasis of foot washing was ritual signifying purification of the spirit ties into Pisces as well. For Pisces apparently rules the feet. Pisces carry the cares of others and often have sore feet. Christ spoke of his role as a servant to his flock, which is also a Pisces notion. Pisces says, I believe, where Aquarius, the age we're now in, says, prove it to me scientifically. Also, Christ's mother, earthly mother, Mary, embodied all the qualities represented by Pisces' polarity of Virgo, namely modesty, commitment to service, and acceptance of what must not be changed. In Pisces, there's a strong need for seclusion, and Christianity puts value on retreats, covenants, cloisters, and spiritual pilgrimages. And so they argue there are a lot of signs within the Bible for the age of Pisces. So according to astrologers, the age of Pisces' age is ending, and Aquarius is ushering in. And while Pisces represented faith, belief, and religion, the age of Aquarius represents contemplation, thought, innovation, and science. And according to them, Aquarius will come based upon the rising of the sun in the constellation Aquarius during the spring equinox, which at that time is going to bring in global changes based upon celestial influence upon the earth. So let's look at the lyrics again to the song Aquarius. Since understanding astrology in the ages of Pisces and Aquarius, understanding what they teach as far as the personality of the age of Aquarius, you'll see the influence within this song. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it this time. I'm going to read it. All right, so the first stanza. When the moon is in the seventh house... The seventh house argues, according to astrology, the most personal and close relationships that people have. These are the best marriages, teams, yada, yada, yada. The seventh house is attributed to the zodiac sign of Libra. So when the moon's in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, when Jupiter aligns with Mars, again, the arguing of the position of planets and their influence in life. As you can read there, a major part of astrology is using the movements and relationships of planets to forecast what will happen 
in our lives. So the way of humanity, the evolution that they argue of humanity, what's going to happen on Earth is all dictated by celestial objects. So when the moon's in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars. So here in the first stanza of this song, Age of Aquarius, you can clearly see that what astrologers argue is the personality of Aquarius, that this is totally within the first stanza of the song. The second stanza, harmony and understanding Sympathy and trust abounding, no more falsehoods or derisions. Arguing for the idea that there's going to be a global peace, global harmony, no more lies, no more uh, just wickedness of mankind. Golden living dreams of vision, mystic crystal revelation, and the mind's true liberation. The mind's true liberation, and this is what a big emphasis is in the New Age movement, is the Christ consciousness. The tapping into what they believe we have the capability of, of becoming one with the universe. To be able to rid ourselves of any improper thoughts and views, such as evil is not necessarily a thing. We just have a wrong perception of what evil and wickedness and suffering is. The mind's true liberation This is the dawn of the age of Aquarius. So if you want to get a grasp of generally what is the age of Aquarius personality wise, the song pretty much lets you know. And this actually aligns, like I'm saying, with what astrologers teach about the personality of the age. Because you can see a wicked spirituality that Aquarius is all about making the world a better place. Having a strong social conscience combined with innovative and visionary intelligence, Aquarius is compassionate and caring, but also eccentric and unbound by convention. She, she, values progress and technologies that can revolutionize the world. So again, you see a clear reference to the New Age view within the song by Fifth Dimension. So what do the lyrics say to the songs you're singing? And with the coming of this new age, astrology believes that the pantheistic universe will have rule of knowledge and science at all cost. And currently, they argue that the main hindrance to its arrival is that of Christianity. Surprise, surprise. It's quite interesting when you consider what God has to say about the universe, what God has to say about mankind's sin, the depravity of man, and what God has to say about the role Satan plays within delusion and deception. You see, it's quite clear that the bringing in of the Age of Aquarius philosophy will bring in people that are abrasive to religion. Not just any religion, but most specifically to Christianity and the true Christianity of the Holy Scriptures. And this will be under the guise that it's simply influenced by the universe in a pantheistic worldview. The rejection of reason and faith to be supplanted by the pseudoscience is going to be anti-God and anti-Christian. Much more can be said about this, but one thing to keep in mind is that anytime someone teaches that we must follow science, emotion, or experience contrary to the Word of God, that should be raising red flags immediately. So, what does God say about astrology? See, like I said earlier, first off, astrology is not a new thing. The fact that God condemns it early in the biblical narrative reveals that it's been around for most likely close to 6,000 years. The warnings given by God to the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 19, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. God reveals that there's actually some nations who worship God's creation, these celestial objects. And rather than seeking God and God's counsel, they're seeking the counsel from gods which are no gods. (coughs) Excuse me. These gods that have eyes but cannot see, gods that have ears that cannot hear, gods that have lips but cannot speak. This isn't the only time God warns about astrological practices, actually. It's read in Isaiah chapter 8, verse number 19 as well. And when they 
shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? As well as Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 and 3, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. This practice is considered an abomination to God, and will bring nothing but judgment for the man that is seeking the creation rather than the creator, which is what God reveals through Paul in Romans chapter 1. But see, the Christian need not be worried about astrological philosophy because we know that according to the word of God that the Christian life is going to bring persecution as people become more depraved and more self-centered. We realize that Satan's purpose in life is to keep people from eternal life or to keep people from fellowship with God in this constant battle with God. In doing so, Satan's crept into the church with New Age practices, New Age beliefs, views, and curiosity. And that's going to reveal in a future episode. Finally, why in the world would we seek insight from a thoughtless creation when we have the beautiful wisdom of the one who created everything? We read in a few places in the book of Daniel at the height of the occultic influence on God's people the value of God's wisdom over anything else. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse number 20, in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. So God gave Daniel all this wisdom over not only just the astrologers and magicians, but everybody within the kingdom of Babylon. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers and magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Remember this account. The king has his dream. He's wanting to know this dream. He's not wanting to know just the interpretation, but what he actually dreamt. And he tells the astrologers, he tells all his people, I'm not telling you what I dreamt. You're not going to tell me what it means. You're going to tell me what I dreamt. And they couldn't do anything. They couldn't do it. But God reveals to Daniel the wisdom, not only of the dream, but the meaning of the dream. Then in Daniel chapter 4, verse 7, Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. You see, here in the book of Daniel, we see clearly the, the conflict between the wisdom of God and the astrological philosophy, that worshiping and seeking wisdom from the creation rather than creator is vanity, is futile, and it ends to nothing. So, what does all this mean? There's been a rise in antagonism against the Christian faith, the rejection of faith for science. And this shouldn't surprise a Christian because God's word says so. Just by seeing the rise of postmodern thought, the hippie counterculture movement, and the acceptance of anything and everything, not of Christianity, is bringing in the way for the return of Jesus Christ. Remember, when the rapture occurs, there is going to be a need for some universal agreement as to the disappearance of millions, if not billions, of people because the biblical rapture will not be accepted at that time. This is why Satan is using these pantheistic worldviews, naturalistic worldviews, and the philosophies, and the reason for panspermia, namely that they're arguing that aliens have seeded life here on Earth. And that's the reason why all of these are receiving more legitimate attention in the secular scientific community. The reason to reason away the disappearance of the rapture so that most during the tribulation period will not turn to God. But remember... God already said all this was going to happen thousands of years ago, even before the supposed ushering in of the age of Aquarius. God's word is the clear compass to our life, and the living of our life according to creation will only bring pseudo-peace as well as estrangement from the one who loves us dearly. Well, that's it. That's enough. We've covered astrology. We've covered what astrology is, the difference between astrology and astronomy, what an astrological age is, the difference between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius, what are the personalities, what do astrologers teach about the ushering in of this age, and what does God have to say about it? 
In the next video, we're going to be looking at various Buddhist, Hindu, and Eastern religions and see how they're being influenced within Christianity, Christian teaching, and within the Christian church. So please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to be notified when that video drops. And until next time, I thanks for watching and God bless.